We San Franciscans live in a pretty urban environment, but our city is also very green, and red, and yellow, and purple. The city is quickly filling with gardens, tightly squeezed into the most unusual spaces. We're on the uh, the roof of Bly Memorial Church in the Tenderloin in San Francisco. This idea has been floating around that we could use this roof space uh, on all these buildings in San Francisco uh, in order to plant these gardens. And so this is a demonstration of that it's possible. The food that's grown in this garden um, on the roof goes back down to the basement. Um, the soup kitchen cooks lunch and dinner every day. We are at the Life Learning Academy Charter School Garden here on Treasure Island. We have over 25 raised beds, um, probably about 15 fruit trees, and um, 50 perennials in the ground. And uh, it's a wonderful garden where teens work in the garden and produce food, both for them to take home and to eat in the school during lunch. Garden for the Environment is San Francisco's teaching garden. Um, it's been here for 20 years. We want San Franciscans to get their hands dirty. San Francisco recently passed a new ordinance that changes the zoning laws here in the city. And what it does is two things. It makes clear that gardens are welcome in all parts of the city. So no matter where you are, what kind of zone, whether it's industrial, commercial, residential, gardens are now welcome throughout the city so long as they're less than one acre in size. And the second thing it does, which is the more forward-thinking aspect, is gardeners are allowed to sell what they grow, no matter where they grow it, which is a change. Urban agriculture also encompasses animal husbandry, so raising animals, uh, chickens, some people have goats, um, bees is a, another popular aspect of urban agriculture. The new ordinance appears to be working to the benefit of all city residents. You get less runoff of the water, so you get less of the pollutants in the, in the streets going into our local oceans. And then you also, you know, just having more of this carbon sequestration through the plants. Um, is, is what you're getting as a result. We're growing food organically, meaning we're not using harmful chemicals. It is often said that the, the average food miles of, of, a, of a single American meal travel, they travel 1,500 miles from farm to table. Well, if you can make that 1,500 inches from your backyard to your dinner table, it's a big difference in the amount of fuel that was used in the distribution of that food. Not only is urban farming greening the city, it's teaching life lessons as well. It gets young people especially involved in growing food and being connected more with their food, which means they're more apt to make healthy choices when they're ordering food or cooking it themselves. The benefits of growing food at home are that you have a relationship with what appears on your meal. When it takes us 180 days to bring a carrot from the garden into the table, um, when we battle with slugs and snails, and then we see what we can grow, we have that much deeper of an appreciation for the food um, that we buy at the grocery store and the hard work that farmers are doing to, to, to bring us that delicious food. So find a bit of soil, grab a hoe, plant some seeds, and you just might sow some hope for a greener tomorrow.